Hello, and welcome to the DataBank video for the February issue of The Banker. I'm Marie Kemple, Investment Banking and Capital Markets Editor, and we're going to be talking about sustainable finance bond issuance and what was a record-breaking year in 2019. I'm joined today by Luis Galindo, Global Head of DCM Research at Dialogic. Before we dive into the figures, mm -hmm. there are various different categories of sustainable finance bonds, right? I mean, people are probably familiar with green bonds, but maybe mm -hmm. less so with the other ones. Yeah, sure. The sustainable finance bonds market is split into three categories. So we have green bonds, where proceeds of these deals are going to be fully utilised to fund green projects. We have social bonds, where proceeds are going to go only into social projects. And then we have sustainability bonds. Funds raised by these deals, by each of these deals, are going to find a mixture of both green and social projects. The rationale behind this classification to provide investors buying these deals full transparency of the assets they are investing in. And across the piece in all three categories, we saw record levels of issuance last year. Can you pull out a few key highlights for us? The three categories achieved record volumes in 2019. Especially important is the green bonds category, which surpassed the 200 billion US dollar mark. Of the overall sustainable finance issuance volume, which totaled 270 billion US dollar, 71 billion were raised by newcomers to the market. This is important because it shows the market is gaining momentum and investors are willing to buy this paper. Another important trend was corporate issuance. Since the market started to take off in 2013-14, a supranational issuance has always taken the lead. They have issued the highest amount of deals and they have raised the largest volumes. Corporate issuance last year more than doubled its volume to 91 US billion dollars. And they almost surpass supranational issuance. This is quite relevant as it shows corporations are taking sustainability more seriously and are starting to embrace it. And if we look at this issue at a global level, Europe continues to lead the charge with volumes of mm -hmm. issuance, right? Um, what are some of the reasons for that? And do we expect to see other regions start to catch up anytime soon? Right. So in Europe is where you know, we can say all started at the very beginning of the market. We had a few investment banks, most of them based in Europe. We had two supranational issuers. It was included the European Investment Bank. And we had several Nordic entities. And all these stakeholders uh, were the ones starting the market. And then we had the green bond principles coming into place. And this set of guidelines were quickly adopted by some of the issuers, especially the European ones. And so since then, we have had European stakeholders making good contributions to the market. For instance, last year, the European Parliament and the Council agreed on the European taxonomy for sustainable finance activities. When this regulation uh, gets approved by the European Commission, which is likely to happen this year, it will provide businesses with more clarity and certainty. When it comes to other geographies, China has taken initiatives in previous years, but given the size of its economy, it will require more. The potential for growth of this market in the US is huge. However, it still remains quite niche and segmented. And it doesn't seem it's going to change in the short or medium term. So, all in all, it seems that European issuance will continue to lead the market in the next few years. And it's obviously really good news that we're seeing these record levels of issuance. But given the scale of the kind of climate change challenge that, that we're facing globally, do you think there is enough of this kind of issuance taking place? And, and do you think we're likely to see more of it in the coming years as well? The financing requirements to uh, reverse the climate crisis situations are considerable. And the sustainable bonds market is still quite incipient and growing. It seems that there will be uh, a need for further help and adequate tools to help the issuance volume and activity go up at a higher pace. Then it depends as well on how incentivized market participants are. For instance, 
On one hand, we have concerns about sustainable bonds having slightly higher issuance costs than conventional deals. And on the other hand, we have renewable energies, which are becoming cheaper every day, which in turn allows these companies to have access to cheaper financing, and in turn, it's good for capital markets. We also have other initiatives, such as in the US and Europe, recently a few programs have been created to try to link energy efficiency in residential buildings with the mortgage market. If these, if these programs uh, are to succeed, are going to represent a huge boost for the mortgage securitization market. So all in all, there are some obstacles there, but the advantages keep appearing and they keep growing. And the prognosis of the market is quite positive. Specs believe that the market is going, to, is going to grow in the next years. And for instance, this year, in 2020, we have a total of 46 billion US dollar of sustainable bonds that will be maturing. This is going to be a good push for refinancing opportunities and in turn to help the issuance volume for this year. And kind of on a, on a linked and similar topic, we're seeing the emergence of, of so-called you know, transition bonds. You know, yeah. how, do, how do these bonds work and how do you think they're going to impact the development of this market? So transition bonds are deals where the issuer is going to use the proceeds to invest in projects that will decrease the carbon footprint. This type of issuers tend to be uh, companies which do not have green projects to invest in. They are carbon intensive companies. And transition bonds might not appear as green as the current sustainable finance bonds, but you know, they open the door for these brown companies to start embracing the sustainability. We have similar situations with other instruments. For instance, performance link instruments, such as SDG link bonds or sustainability or ESG link loans. These instruments are instruments where terms of the deal are going to change, usually coupon payments, if the borrower is able to meet or achieve a goal that has a positive impact in the sustainability space. These deals are growing rapidly in the, in the past months. And for instance, the ESG link loans market surpassed last year the 100 uh, billion US dollar. All these new uh, structures that will allow companies to start taking the first steps in the sustainability space. And if we add regulation, probably we have the market uh, on pace to keep growing in the forthcoming years. Great. Thank you so much for your time today. No problem.